Last year, during December, I did a video asking why there aren't any Christmas classics anymore. I had a few reasons as to why that is, but I think I was negating a huge aspect of classic movies that I think people often neglect also. And that's the fact that they have to be near unanimous. Like Home Alone, The Godfather, Spider-Man 2, The Shining, all very different movies, but all classics in their own right, and I'd say that most people can agree on that. The deal with Christmas movies is that it's hard to get everyone on board with a new Christmas movie when there are so many classics people dedicate to this holiday specifically already. So it would take something monumental to come through and join the ranks of Love Actually and Home Alone and Miracle on 34th Street, but I think something monumental has come down the pipeline. The only thing missing from it is the across the board unanimity. The hold of is starring the God Among Men Paul Giamatti, the unlikely newcomer Dominic Sessa, and the always wonderful divine Joy Randolph, I think has every ounce of quality a contemporary Christmas classic needs while simultaneously not being anywhere near popular enough to justify that title. But to get the obvious out of the way, the reviews are incredible. Rotten Tomatoes, unreal. Letterboxd average rating, sublime. Walter Chaw wrote, the ideas flowed cleanly and honestly, and I was inspired and believed for the only and last time in my life that I might be special in the ways I suspected I was special, and seen for all my imperfections, both obvious and secret, and nevertheless found worthy in the balance. Which is more eloquent than anything I'm about to say, but I mention it all to say the holdovers is special. But what makes it special? For one, I think it's honesty. Truthfulness and honour are a big theme in the movie. Mr. Hunnam incessantly repeating that Barton men don't lie becomes somewhat representative of the character's arcs and the story progression. Because as a statement, it seems very blanket and obvious. There is no hidden subtext, it's a straightforward sentence. But depending on the context, that statement evolves. At first, it's a condemnation of fallacies. It's an angry statement hurled at Angus for lying. But by the end is a sort of philosophy. It's gone through so many scenarios and challenges that the characters come to their own conclusion of not only what that means, but why it matters. For Mr. Hunnam, who is a deeply complex character, the phrase seems deep-rooted. His relationship with the truth is an interesting one. A lie is what had him thrown out of Harvard. Telling the truth is what risked his job by failing a student whose parents benefited the school. He has a bluntness which has caused students and faculty alike to dismiss and hate him. But what he didn't realise was that honesty is not the be-all and end-all. There is space for nuance. Barton Men Don't Lie isn't so much about telling the truth factually, it's about telling the truth that matters. The greatest example of this is of course by the end where Mr. Hunnam takes the fall for Angus by lying about taking Angus to go and see his father. But he ends that conversation with some of the most beautiful truths spoken in the entire movie. Painful and hurtful truths for a parent to hear and for a guardian to say. Hunnam, I suppose, came to this realisation when talking talking to an old college friend and he tells him how well he's doing and then proceeds to tell Angus that he gets to enjoy his story, not others. His truth is for him and this idea of honesty is explored in not just big overt ways but smaller ways. Like Angus telling Hunnam that he smells or that people hate him, kind of reflecting that bluntness of Hunnam back onto him. The idea of honesty and truth in this film is vast enough to have its own video dedicated to it but the point is the film is is earnest, which I think is a vital ingredient to a Christmas classic. Not that it just makes you cry, but that it earns its emotional payoff. Kevin in Home Alone, despite me not loving that movie, is a perfect character to example this point. When he's finally reunited with his family, it's emotionally bubbling, but we haven't spent the whole movie wallowing over his regrets or anything. He doesn't spend the entire movie moping around missing his family. But it still works, so why? Well, because combining a few scenes of him earnestly expressing his sadness, we see the journey Kevin goes through. From the opening where he claims he hates his family to going through the most awful situation and discovering that he needs them because through his parading he's scared, through his joy-filled mornings he's lonely, through his outside world adventures he's 
loss. They earn that reunition and I think the holdovers does that and more. Another thing they have in common funnily enough is the theme of abandonment and loneliness because our central three characters are all experiencing this in some way which is strangely a core theme of any great Christmas story. There's Mr. Hunnam coming to terms with his loneliness and inability to court a woman but most of that striving from a lack of confidence and trying. Angus Tully literally being the holdover. His father is in a mental health facility, his mother abandoning him at school to go on a honeymoon, and even Mr. Hunnam expresses numerous times that even he doesn't want Angus around. And finally, Mary, who is grieving her son. They've all lost or are just simply lost and are seeking a way to make it through this holiday, which is about family and being together. The title, The Holdovers, doesn't just explicitly apply to the students left over and specifically Angus Tully, but it applies to all three of our characters. They're all people that nobody wants or are all people that have nobody. There's a beautiful but heartbreaking line that feels almost Shakespearean where Hunnam is explaining to Mary that he's writing a monograph and when questioned why not just write a whole book, he says he doesn't think he has a whole one in him. To which Mary replies with, you can't even dream a whole dream, can you? Which really is the crux of this character. He he has been held back in his life through resentments and self-doubt and even self-pity in this film as well as our other two is about Mr. Hunnam learning to live his whole dream. Which is why his leaving in the end doesn't feel like a bitter ending. He loses his job but Mary gives him a full length empty book to fill and he sets onto his journey no longer chained to the past. He can go and live his whole dream that he didn't know was inside him. But this film's greatest gift is its specific talent for making the audience themselves feel special. The characters in this movie are not just there to have independent arcs that service a narrative, their arcs intertwine with each other to craft a meaning and mirror for the audience to reflect on and go through a similar arc themselves. It's a movie about accepting who you are and accepting others for who they are and not letting your preconceived notions of those people get in the way of progress. And accepting your losses and understanding Understanding the need to move forward, seeing your failures as not failures but opportunities to grow, finding a family in who's with you when it counts and not who isn't when they should be. The film rediscovers the worth and magic of Christmas because the meaning of the holiday evolves as you grow and it takes on new responsibilities and ages with you in real life and that can leave it feeling especially without magic. But what the holdovers does is tell you that the magic of Christmas is not in the holiday holiday is not exactly in who's with you but within you as your true and most honest self. Which is a message that is unanimous because everybody is special and more importantly everybody wants to feel special and I think this film executes providing that feeling to its audience exceptionally and that's why I think it's a contemporary Christmas classic. But that's just me. Let me know what you think. I have missed so much of this film in this short video because there is just an incredible amount to unpack. But have you seen The Holdovers? If so, let me know what you think of it. If not, are you gonna? And whether it's a potential Christmas classic or not, as always, keep watching movies.